Hello, welcome back to the course on RSA signal processing for music applications. This week we are talking about the short time Fourier transform. And one of the fundamental elements of uh, this transform is the analysis window. So in this um, programming uh, lecture, I want to talk about windows, but from a programming perspective. So let's open um, a text editor, uh, gedit, in which I type um, script that what it does is to uh, get a window in this case the Hunning window and then it computes the spectrum of the window but since uh, I have to do all these uh, zero phase windowing and center things around zero and zero padding uh, at the end the code is a little bit longer than uh, what it would be uh, desirable so let's uh, go through the code and uh, talk about the main uh, aspects of it. Well, first, uh, we have the, the packages that we need. Uh, we import uh, NumPy, uh, SciPy, and Matplotlib. Then uh, we have the lines that relate to the window. So we defined uh, the window uh, length, in this case uh, 63, and the variable uh, that we keep that is M, capital M. Then uh, we call the function get window, uh, which uh, uh, it has two parameters, the name of the window and the size. So the window I chose is the Hanning window, which is the race cosine uh, uh, function. And then I need uh, the, the variables that keep uh, the middle of the window information and it has to handle this even and odd uh, situation so uh, the, the middle uh, can be different depending on even and odd side and uh, so the two sides might have a different uh, number of uh, samples. Okay, then we need to prepare the, the window for uh, computing the FFT so to place the window at the zeroth uh, location so what we're going to do is we create a buffer of the size of the FFT we want to compute, in this case 512 samples, and then we place the window around the zeroth sample. Okay, so we take the second half of the window and place it at the beginning, and the first half of the window and place it at the end. Then we can compute the spectrum of this buffer, Okay, so we'll compute uh, the buffer using the FFT algorithm and then we convert the complex spectrum into uh, absolute value and phase. The absolute value in order to convert it to uh, decibels, which is the, the way that we like to see uh, the information of the magnitude, we have to make sure that there are no zeros uh, so that the log uh, of zero uh, doesn't uh, and it's not there so we will have to check if the absolute value is below this epsilon value which is the minimum value we can have in, in Python uh, so we, that's why we have uh, these uh, three lines uh, of code and then we compute the angle uh, of the complex values and then in order to uh, show it better to display the uh, spectrum the magnitude and phase spectra um, and see it uh, centered in the middle, let's say, of the array, we undo uh, these, uh, these uh, zero phase windowing things so that we place back the data in uh, the middle of the array so that it's easier to visualize. Okay, let's uh, run it. Okay, so we are in uh, IPython and uh, with uh, PyLab uh, in it, so we have the matplotlib uh, packets already in it and we can run the the script okay that's it and now we can start plotting uh, things that we have computed for example we can plot uh, the window okay so this is the Hanning window which is this uh, race cosine going from 0 to 1 and the 63 samples we have computed then uh, we can plot how this window has been um, uh, placed uh, in the FFT buffer. So we can plot the FFT buffer. 
Okay, so here uh, the window is centered at zero, so we have the second half uh, from zero to half of the window and the first half uh, right before the 512 uh, value of the FFT buffer. Okay, and now uh, we compute the FFT and we can plot the magnitude spectrum resulting from that. Okay, so this is the magnitude spectrum again uh, centered around zero so here we have the positive uh, frequency values and in the second part we have the negative uh, the negative uh, values so a better way to display that so it's uh, to move things around and locate the the main lobe in the center so that's how we did and mx1 uh, has um, the information in the center okay and if we plot the phase uh, we can also show the location of the faces and here what is important of course are the faces in the middle and here we have these uh, two pi discontinuities but basically everything is zero uh, modulus two pi and uh, it's uh, clear uh, it's it's good because that means that we centered the window around zero and therefore um, we have a, what we call a zero phase uh, window Okay, in order to visualize the x-axis better, I uh, here I, I typed uh, some uh, commands to plot it in a way that the axes are uh, better shown. So here what I did was to uh, plot uh, against uh, an x-axis array that has been normalized so that the, the zero padding uh, does not affect. So we divide by n and multiply by m, so we actually see the samples, let's say, of the, with respect to the window. And I also have normalized the, the magnitude so that the maximum is zero uh, decibels. And I am only plotting the values that go uh, in the x uh, axis from minus 20 to 20, and the dv values I am plotting from minus 80 to zero. Okay, so now if we uh, run this uh, script with these lines added, well, we are seeing the magnitude spectrum of the Hunning window, but with an x-axis that uh, shows the center around zero and decibels starting from zero. So now we can check the values we talked about that describe the windows. We mentioned that the, the main lobe the width of the main lobe is an important characteristic of the window and in here we can see if we look from the on the bottom right side where uh, our x uh, value is of the cursor and we can see that uh, this uh, main lobe uh, sort of deep is at minus two and this other one is at two so clearly this uh, main lobe at this uh, location the width is uh, around for samples, what we call for bins, and this is what we mentioned about the Hunning window. And then also we talked about the side lobe level, the highest side lobe level, and here again we can put the cursor at the highest side lobe level, and it tells me uh, kind of the value that uh, this has, and it's around uh, minus 31 uh, decibels, which is the kind of thing that we mentioned. Okay, so now we can keep uh, changing the window, and for example, we can put instead of the humming, well, instead of the humming, we can put the humming, and uh, compute the same script. And okay, that's uh, a different window. And if we can measure the main lobe width, we see that it also has uh, four samples, but now the side lobe level is much lower. So the highest side lobe is around minus 40 decibels which is the kind of things we mentioned in the theory class okay and if we go to another window for example we go to the the Blackman window uh, Blackman window and we save it and run it okay well, yes, that's what we saw in the theory class, and now the main lobe is uh, wider. It's around six uh, uh, beans, 
and the side globe level is much lower, around uh, 58 uh, uh, decibels. And then finally, the last uh, window that we also talked about is was the Blackman Harris window. Oh, Blackman Harris window that we can uh, compute. And if we run it, okay. So now, in fact, we are not seeing the side lobes. And this is because the range that we uh, are specifying doesn't even reach where the side lobes is. So let's uh, change the display and let's change the axis to instead of having minus 80, let's put at least minus 100 so that when we uh, show it, now we are seeing the side lobes. In fact, the highest side lobe is around minus 92 decibels. And now the main lobe is quite wider, is around 8 uh, beams. Okay, so this is a good way to visualize and try to understand the windows. And so please uh, feel free to uh, play around with that. Now I want to um, do it but with a sinusoid. So to uh, analyze a sinusoid that has been windowed. And this is uh, another script. Uh, this is much shorter because instead of calling the FFT and worrying about all this uh, centering around zero and worrying about the zero padding, etc., I call directly the DFT anal uh, function that we have in the SMS tools uh, um, uh, directory. So now what I do is I, I uh, specify the directory of uh, the models where I have all the, the models of the SMS tools and I import the DFT model uh, uh, file. Okay? so that I can call this DFT anal function that uh, receives as input uh, the signal, the window, and the FFT size, and automatically does all the operations that uh, we just showed in the previous script. Okay, so in this script, basically what uh, I do is I get a sine wave with a given frequency. In this case, the frequency uh, is 5000 hertz. Uh, of course, a sampling rate, uh, 44,100, and I compute 101 samples of a sinusoid, which are basically going to be the same length of the window size I am using. For example, in this case, I'm using the ham, uh, Hanning window, but maybe let's uh, change it and let's use uh, the, I don't know, for example, the, um, the Hamming window. Okay, and now we compute uh, the analysis, and here I also display uh, in a way the output so that I centered uh, everything uh, and talked about uh, hertz. So we are going to display only the positive part because the DFT anal only computes uh, the positive part of the spectrum, and then I will be displaying it, uh, showing it in hertz. Okay, so let's uh, execute. Uh, this uh, file test one okay and this is the sinusoid of uh, uh, of, uh, of what I have analyzed and this is the the, the shape of the window in fact no? so this is, uh, is uh, proves what we talked about in theory that when we analyze a sine wave uh, and we multiply it by a given window, in fact what we're seeing in the spectrum is the transform of the window centered at the frequency of the sinusoid, okay, 5000 Hertz, and with the amplitude of the sinusoid. Uh, the amplitude in this case was normalized, so it's not, it's not here an important thing, but we would also uh, see the amplitude of the sinusoid. And of course, we see the standard characteristics of, of, the, of the window. And here, the x-axis is in hertz. So uh, we need to understand the relationship between uh, frequency in hertz and uh, all these other values, the beans that we talked about. And of course, if we change the window and we compute the, like what the one we mentioned, the Blackman, uh, Blackman uh, Harris, OK, 
okay so now we do this uh, computation okay and now we are seeing again okay, the black Harris window the magnitude spectrum but centered at the frequency of uh, the sinusoid okay uh, so that's uh, basically all I wanted to uh, talk about in this uh, lecture so we have be been using um, some uh, packages from uh, from Python and also of course we have been using the SMS tools in order to get the uh, DFT uh, analysis uh, code from that uh, and that's all so we we have been uh, focusing on one aspect of the short time Fourier transform which is the analysis window uh, which is a fundamental uh, element and uh, unless we understand uh, how windows work it's going to be very difficult to understand how spectrograms and how the short time Fourier transform and other uh, spectral analysis uh, systems work so please make sure that you understand uh, the concept of uh, windowing and how it affects when either uh, by itself when it's uh, we see the the spectrum or when we window a particular signal and therefore so how we see the spectrum of uh, of a particular signal having been windowed in a certain way so thank you very much and i hope to see you in next uh, programming class that we will basically uh, put it together with the whole code of the short time for your transform and we will be able to understand uh, the whole uh, implementation of the STFT. So see you then. Bye-bye.